5 a.m. in the morning on this beautiful day today, and I am going to choose to enjoy it. So something that happens though, if you suffer from a really, really intense panic attack like I do, um, which only happens in moderation, but it's, you know, it happens still, is that your body is super out of whack and can be out of whack for quite some time. Because again, when you go into fire flight mode like that, your body literally shuts down everything else that uh, is essentially non-essential for survival um, for you to get through that moment. And so your body is just like a train wreck for a few weeks afterwards. So uh, yeah, so I'm going through, so my cortisol all over the place, blood pressure all over the place. And so I'm waking up wide awake at 4 a.m. and then I'm gonna crash in another two hours and is what it is, besides that. But guys, so something I was gonna talk about is so something that I love so much about cigars. So if you are a man, something happens, there are a lot of societal pressures. And also, generally speaking, it's different now, but for many of us, based on where you're raised, um, different cultures, everything else, generally you're taught that you're supposed to just push through everything that you're supposed to just take care of others fully and like not really ever have time for yourself which is like and there's a lot of good traits to compartmentalization to just getting things done everything else it's just part of being a guy it makes the world turn however though if you're a guy you need me time on occasion and for me i was raised in a way where i was taught that me time was selfish it was wrong in fact it was a sin to have me time i was told in my family you are a sinner if you have time for yourself and you're not spending all your time taking care of your parents blah, blah blah I grew up in an incredibly abusive household and also besides that I'm um, as a kid uh, like I had dyslexia I had OCD all these things but then I grew up in this crazy like cultist religious family that did not believe in those things and it was I was demon possessed and I was of Satan and so if I ever spoke about those things I would either be beaten and like spanked but no being spanked across the face um, that's called insane child abuse but besides that um, I'd be beaten whatever and then if I had time for myself my mother would always put it or either parent would always put under scrutiny and be like how dare you take that time to do that thing like if I drew my art whatever it was. And so I learned to one, not have any boundaries. Two, I was a bad person. And three, I don't deserve anything good. And so what happened was all that culmination, all the abuse came out, especially um, when I was about 18 years old. And I had went through a bad assault. And when I was assaulted, um, I moved back home briefly. And this was within two weeks of moving back home. My mother said, hey, um, so you stopped paying me money. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention I was supporting my mother financially um, as a 17-year-old. As a 17-year-old. Think about that. Which also means I was doing okay for a 17-year-old. But think about that. So high levels of abuse. And so all the toxicity, all the abuse, I compartmentalized so hard. And I just put it into work. And I literally moved out of the house to get away from that. I lived in my car for three months. Oh my God. And so I remember finally, it was about the same time of year, I had another massive panic attack. And my whole body was destroyed. I was like, what the hell? And um, I was raised, um, not totally, but I did have some good influences in my life. I just didn't know what was going on. And one of my heroes I read about was Winston Churchill. And Winston Churchill was this powerful man, and he was this intellectual, a painter, an orator, everything else, a leader, and he had a deep love of cigars. And I felt destroyed, and I was lying in bed, I literally was in bed for a day, just staring at the ceiling. I thought to myself, wait a second, who's my hero? Well, one of them's Winston Churchill. He's a cigar smoker. Hmm. Maybe I'll try one. And so I drove down to the local like tobacco shop. I was like a mile away. And I said, hey, so what's a good cigar for um, someone who's never touched a cigar before? And he was like, this is it, a Romeo and Juliet. This is the one that guys get for high school graduation. And so in Virginia, that was like, okay, cool. Like high school graduation. Back then, 18 was still legal age. It wasn't, the Trump administration hadn't happened yet besides that. Um, and so I went home and you know, and I, I epically butchered. I think I, <laughs> I actually got a nail. I cut a hole with a nail into the bottom of that fucking cigar. Like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. But besides that, but still, 
Like, how do you get a draw out? But besides, how do you get, like, how do you breed this? But so I got home and I started just start smoking it. And for the first time in months, I sat down alone and just went, I got to take care of myself. Holy moly. Like, I, I'm going to kill myself with this stress. Like, I need to actually take care of myself. And that moment, as interesting as it is, is when mentally I made a turning point where I stopped just running around in circles, exhausting myself for no reason, letting everyone's stress beat down on me nonstop, and I just kind of compartmentalized fully. I focused fully on the business, and that's when my business took off the way it should, and also took off in a healthy manner, where I took care of myself. I started sleeping. I wasn't sleeping two hours a night like I was. I started sleeping. I started eating better. I started exercising regularly. I got a good place to live as well. Um, I was actually the start of living out of the hotel. I went from my car to the hotel. Oh yeah, I started a karate school inside of a hotel meeting room and grew that to a storefront. And I, I did the same thing here, but like wild story. But besides that, I'm, I'm definitely, um, I guess shit done. Let's go with that. Um, but having that after everything was so powerful for me. And so cigars since then, when I have it, it's like a powerful moment. Because for me, it reminds me of empowerment. It reminds me to take care of myself. It reminds me to slow down. It reminds me to say, hey, you got this. You can take this time for yourself and think because you're going to conquer the world, buddy. So currently, I'm probably going to lay it off them a little bit just so my blood pressure and all my systems are just regulated during this time. Um, because again, panic attacks are really, really rough when you have one. Um, but... That's where it's like, it's, it's something where it's almost like a symbol. And to me, it's like a symbol of empowerment. But also for me, when I have it, it's like, it just makes me smile to do, yeah, yeah, Chris, you got this, buddy. You've done it before. You'll do this again. You got like whatever hardship I'm going through. Like I had someone suing me um, a few months ago and like crazy, like crazy thing. It was a, a business competitor guy besides that guy's a, a dickhead. Um, but yeah, I fucking won, motherfucker. But besides that, yeah, yeah, crush that bitch. Um, he was a piece of shit, but besides that. Um, back to what I was saying, though. Uh, it's a moment of empowerment. It made me aggressive in a right way. It helped me get aggressive. And cigars do make me you know, aggressive, but in a healthy way. It makes me feel just invigorated. Like, just trying to conquer things. And, which is also why I get, I get a sneaky suspicion why Churchill was the way Churchill was. Because if you read about Churchill, he was, he was an aggressive son of a bitch uh, for a long ass time. But, that's what cigars mean to me. It's a powerful thing. And so if you enjoy it, I, you may have your reason for it, I'm sure. Hopefully it's not quite like the tumultuous reason for me. But that's kind of my backstory, how I got into it. And why for me it's just like this... Boom. And partly why I'm like, you know, I'm just going to throw on a blazer for this puppy. Um, but anyway, guys, what do cigars mean to you? Why do you love cigars? Um, do you have a moment like that? Maybe not so dramatic as mine, but do you have something like that where it's just like, ka for me? Um, anyway, gentlemen, ladies, love you all. Again, I'm Chris Donner. Um, have the best day of your life. I'll see you around, all right? Adios, amigos.